at the age of nine, I was doing the storage. I was a plumber. I was lifting up the lids of the shows with the help of another girl that was was in education in the classroom as well. She was sent over to clean them with me. And we had to get down into the storage shows, which I was only about, we say, three feet at the time. It all but covered my waist with the storage coming up. We used to have to draw the drawing sticks because the toilets were flooded. And we used to have to shove them up and down, up and down. We had the surge up to our waist, standing in our bare feet, with our shoes and stockings off. We were taken into the Black Mariah, big black car. Dad just left. They shaved us, our hair. And put um, paraffin on our hair. And they burnt all our clothes that we were wearing. Because we had fleas. Philomena was four. I was eight and a half, I think, eight, eight and a half. They sent Chris to Galway. They wouldn't put us together, which was very cruel. We couldn't understand what was happening. But little did we know, you know, what was going to happen. Little did we know. Little did we bloody know. I, I always believe that certain traumas, if you like, are embedded forever in the brain and in the memory and that no matter what you do, you can never seem to erase them, you know, or you may forget about them for a while and you may just see or do something that will trigger it all off again. Um, one of my earliest memories of Golden Bridge, and I have never forgotten it, is going in there the first day with a little bag of clothes, a little small suitcase, in fact it was. It was an old brown one, and my clothing was in it. And the following day, actually seeing another child wearing an item of clothing belonged to me. I was uh, sent into the kitchen to do the cooking, cleaning and skivvying. I did that for a few years. I was put in there. I didn't get a great deal of schooling. It was... Sometimes I'd go into class and it would be mostly like in the afternoon when there'd be nothing doing in the kitchen. We used to have to sweep a yard which was a hundred feet long. And I used to have to go from corner to corner, from top to bottom. And I had to sweep that and then put my hands down the showers again, the small showers, where the kids in the yard might put sweet papers down. And the stink of the smell of them was absolutely appalling, you know? There was snails, everything down the showers. I used to have to put my bare hands down and clean it. And she'd come along and I used to have to leave the lid off so that she'd expect it. If it was dirty, I got a stick across the face. During the night, they come around and check the beds. So lays it down. And uh, if you wet the bed, there's a hallway, there's sinks and, and all bats and all. She used to fill it up with cold water and throw you into a bath of cold water. And then you, they put you out into a yard with the same nitrous on you. And sitting there all night. Sometimes it'd be really snowing out of heavens and all. For wet in the bed. I was in the class and she was doing the... We were doing like um, like an English lesson, I think. And um, I put my pen in the ink well and I got a bit of ink on my dress. And the nun walked in. She just gave me a whack with her hand. How dare you get ink on your dress and all this sort of stuff, you know. And she was going mad. So she said, you're coming with me. She took me up to a little place called St. Bridget's. And uh, she just beat me and beat me. And beat me and beat me. She just beat me everywhere. And I was crying for my mom.
fucking old folks said, no, mom, mom, please, mom, help me, help me. <coughs> I kept saying, mom, please, please, mom, help me. <coughs> oh, I miss her so much. <coughs> I missed her so much. I couldn't believe where I was, you know. I couldn't believe it. And she said, you can call your, your mother all you want, she said. She's dead. Well, there was a plane in the schoolyard and the dress got dirty and the nun happened to see it. So she dragged me into it. There was a toilet out in the yard. There's a couple of toilets. And there were steps going down to it. She cut me by the back of my head. Bashed my head off the toilet pot. Half my teeth went down the toilet and the other half went on the ground. Every time Sister Sophia met me in the school when I'd be cleaning during the day, she'd give me a wallet, but I wouldn't know what I'd be wallet for. Every time she passed me out, I'd get the strap around her habit right across the face if she didn't have the stick. She was a monster, a pure monster. I often wonder what she mad herself. She would go into a mad rage that she'd swear she was going to take her life within a minute or two. And all of a sudden she'd just snap over it. I loved the piano. And sometimes I used to sneak upstairs and uh, just... Um, Sometimes I'd be open and have a go and used to even make up little tunes like, you know, and I was just playing. And then all of a sudden, um, this great big smack came on my right ear, you know, like that. This almighty smack from this teacher. And uh, she banged the piano down as well, my fingers. I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And she said, how dare you? How dare you, she said. And she gave me another one. She gave me quite a good hiding. I remember one night I was told to stand on the landing and it was about three in the morning. She hadn't come. So I crept into bed. I thought she forgot about me. Or I fell asleep and thought she was gone into bed herself and didn't see me in the dark. So next of all, I heard the footsteps coming to our lady's dorm. So I knew she was making for my bed. She pulled back the clothes and with the stick, she leathered me from head to toe. She lashed me out of it. That I, with the screams of me, I woke up a few of the girls when they heard me screaming and I heard them saying, sister, you'll kill her. Stop, sister, you'll kill her. You're doing too much. It was a little girl, me and another girl, walking down the line. Two of us got out of line. She got hiding, so did I. But the next morning I didn't see her. She was, we were all told to go into the, the, the lodge and she was dead. She was laid out. She was in her communion clothes. She was beautiful, she was. And I blamed myself because I said it should have been me in a hole. Because I think I started the mess and forced. When I was in the kitchen, I had to put the mince into the mixer. Huh? And what happened was, <laughs> I put my finger in, my little finger, this finger here. You know, it was tiny. It was about, like, 13, you know. And I, I put it in accidentally. And the machine just chopped a bit off. And the whole top of it, all the flesh was just hanging. And the nun thought it was quite funny. She got great pleasure in telling them that a bit of Kathleen Burns' finger was in the mince. You couldn't cry or anything because she just clout you one. You just couldn't cry. And she said, well, she said, that was a stupid thing to do, wasn't it now, Burn? You know? Well, I said, sister, I didn't, you know, I said it was an accident. I said, I just, yeah accident my foot she said anyway she said 
there's nobody can take you to the hospital now, she said, so you'll just jolly well have to wait. And I just had to carry on working in the kitchen. Everything was spotless when Miss O'Malley was coming to the school. He was from the Eastern Help Board or something. Everything was scrubbed overnight. We were all dressed in new clothes, new shoes. I was even put into classrooms, even though I wasn't being educated. I'd be thrown into a classroom for the day just so that Mr O'Malley wouldn't see me going around the school cleaning with a bucket and cloth and a deck scrub in my hands. They pretend they were educating us. Tablecloths were put on the tables. There was a cake maybe on the table, the middle of the table for six at each table. Mr O'Malley must have thought we had a great life. But as soon as Mr O'Malley was gone, tablecloths, everything was taken off the tables. Everything. We were all back to normal again. Never went to school. I used to be mostly in the dining hall, cleaning and scrubbing, or else down the laundry. Unless I was still down, I had to read away. I've been laying in myself trying to. They used to call me Dopey Dowdy. That was only tick. So it was pointless teaching somebody that knows nothing. There's the reason why. But I've been trying to prove to myself I'm not. I used to go into the toilet and try and learn how to read and write myself through the breaks while they're all in the classrooms. We say I was scrubbing a dorm tree. I might take five minutes and pick up a little storybook and go in and sit on the toilet and try and pick out words and try and educate myself. I would get homework from the National School and I would go up to the, back up to the orphanage after school time but I had to make rosary beads. And in order to finish the homework, I'd have to neglect the rosary beads. And in order to finish the, the rosary beads, I'd have to neglect the homework. So I got punished for not having the rosary beads made, and I got punished for not having my homework done. And I was always torn, and I always strived to do my best in order not to get in trouble. And the only trouble you could get into was just getting beaten. So I didn't want to be beaten anymore. So to avoid a beating, I just tried to do everything... And I got it wrong most of the time. <laughs>